Hello. Welcome to part 37 of our journey through a weed wives remedy. Today we're going to be talking about trees. Yes. So um, if anyone has any tree stories or anything or um, anyone is currently working with the tree in any fashion, magical, herbal, anything like that. Um, hold on one second and I'm going to, I always forget to do this. Yeah. Gonna make this um, post on Facebook. <laughs> um, because something happened with StreamYard. Um, because, oh, I can't put a put, sorry, guys. I can't put a link up there. Okay, hold on, let's see. Um, StreamYard messed, is messed up and it says, it's, it, hello! Hi, Miss Heather. How are you doing? <laughs> um, so some news, of course. Um, I think you know, but um, I don't know if everyone else knows. I've been, my job, I'm not getting a new job at a new place, but I'm getting a new job at an old place. So I am going to first shift, which means I'm going to be working 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. instead of 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. So it's a real big shift. I'm kind of tired, but okay. That's good. I am exhausted. I don't know if you can tell, but I have four days off after a six-day week, which has been insane. Um, yeah, we're, watch we're working a lot of overtime. So... But my change in schedule affects book club, so we're going to go to 8 p.m., um, and we may go every week. So that's exciting, you know, 8 p.m. on probably Friday, and then after that, I'm probably going to go live doing, um, okay, that seems better. Oh, okay. Okay. Does that work better for you, schedule better, or you're talking about maybe it works better for me? It works better for me because I see my husband. <laughs> He, we work opposite schedules, and then, like, when they have me working Saturdays, I don't see him at all. So, um, yeah. So that affects book club, which is cool to be going back to possibly every week. Um, and at just more of a set, I think more of a better schedule for more people. Maybe more people will be able to attend. Um, like I said, I've never gotten any feedback from anybody if anyone has any feedback, I'd love to hear, love to hear from you about the schedule. Um, I have a cat here. This is Eugene. He's he'll turn himself around eventually. There he goes. See, Mr. Eugene. Let me lower it down a little bit. He's Mr. Eugene. He just got fed. Ooh. Oh, your schedule change is better for you. Yeah, I think it'll be better for. For me, um, I'll be on more of a, way more of a set schedule. I'll have to get up at super early in the morning, like 4.30, to be able to be ready to go. But because um, I, I have a lot of stuff to do in the morning. But then, like, you know, go to bed at, like, 10. <laughs> um, but it's better to go to bed at 10 than at, like, or 11 than like three or four at night, which is really difficult. And I'm always falling asleep and then everything else. He's sweet. Yeah, he, he loves being fed. He's always like super. He's good today. Oh, look at his face. Looks so funny when he's back. Um, Eugene will be joining us at 8 o'clock though, but I'm hoping it's okay for everybody else. So. Like I said, I mean, we've made so many changes over the years um, because my jobs, 
always change. Um, but just what that's just what happens. I think it happens to a lot of people. So um, I really appreciate everyone being flexible. But I don't know where everybody went. Like Sonia and Pad Pansy. She is. I mean, she has been hasn't been here in such a long time. So everyone's just sort of gone. Um, used to show up. So I think that could be a schedule. But anyway, we'll see how it goes. Yes, we will. We will. We will see how it goes. So. And also, it's time to pick a new book. We we have to pick a new book, guys. So, um, Heather, if you have any ideas, you know, just let me know, and I'll. And when I get a couple, if if we get a couple, I'll do a poll, and you know, just keep in mind that whatever book we pick, we're going to be on it for a while, unless I change the format, which could happen. We might maybe do like, not go through every section you know I might not read everything so you know people might have to get the book and read more on their own to be having the discussion I don't but we need more people for that uh, even though we just had like it's about three people we do really well like I know we do really well um, so if I've scared anyone off if anyone's just like no I hate book club now. Please come back. <laughs> anyway. So, I know that I just don't love chatting with you, Heather. I'm, I'm, you know, but you and I cannot do that, do this alone as, as, as much as, um, no. Unless you want to become my co-host and then, and then I'd want you on screen. So. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Um, all right. So I have had a crazy week, so I have not read this section. Um, it's real. Actually, did I read some of it? No. I didn't read any of it, Kitty. None. Nada. Come to the light. <laughs> yes, exactly. Come to book club. It's awesome. All right. So this is chapter is on 174. Did you ever find your book, Heather? Um, and it's deep, earth deep in the cold moons, winters, wild roots, trees, and remedies. So also, if anybody wants to check out this, I have to put a link for that. The Stories for the Earth um, podcast on, on this book, we, we did one really good um this is a piece of hair is bugging me all right oh you found it and lost it again okay. you gotta put like a little tracking device on it <laughs> um so i what so what kind like okay so heather what is like the most common tree around you that you think that you have we have like spruces, and I believe they are Norway spruces. I could be wrong, but that's what I was identifying. We have walnut, and of course we have pine, good old pine. Um, we have several other kind of trees that I don't know what they're called, and they've got these like really super big leaves. We've got magnolia trees. Um, so we've got a, quite a bit of tree action. <laughs> First we live in the mountains, in the woods, pretty much. So, tulip poplars and blackberry. Cool. I have this guidebook that I got on trees that I, because I love trees a lot, um, but I really haven't. You know, it's just a, it's just an Eastern Tree Peterson Peel Guide. So, Hackberry? I've never heard of Hackberry. Is that? I thought you meant Blackberry. I thought you was misspelling. Miss. 
um, I've got a bookmark to sumac. <laughs> we have sumacs too, but I don't know if that's considered a tree. These guys are not the poison ones. The poison ones have white flowers, so they don't do this. They don't have the little berry thing, so yeah. But anyway, this is a good bite. Good guidebook for trees. Look it up. Mm. Let me look it up on the internet. That'll be faster. Oh, wow. Commonly known as hackberry, a large deciduous tree native to North America. It's also known as the nettle tree, sugarberry, beaverwood, northern hackberry, and American hackberry. This is from Wikipedia. That's pretty awesome. Pop this baby into the uh, into the comments. So let's see. Wow, it's got like real like ridgy bark too. It looks like. Oh, okay. And it actually has, can you eat the berries? It actually has berries, which makes sense. Um, it gets very big. It can get very big, looks like. But yeah, very deep grooved bark. Like, looks like smooth kind of pointy shape leaves. I don't know. I don't know how to, I don't know the correct terminology for that, so. Uh, it isn't my favorite tree at all. I would cut them all down if I could. No, they are very tall. The birds eat, oh, okay, so you can't eat the berries. Well, that's awesome. I haven't seen any around here, but usually when I know what to look for in a, like a plant or a tree, I'll see it. I'll notice it. So, I may be noticing some of these. Oh, they get, they turn yellow in the fall. That's real pretty. That's real pretty. Well, I mean, they're bird food. Birds need to eat, I guess. So, um, but yeah. So one of these days I'll I'll get more into trees into um, learning about them. But this whole chapter is about trees, so that's cool. We'll start today. Do, do, do. So yes, if anyone else wants to uh, tell you know say what trees they have by them, please do so in the comments. And um, I think that'd be really interesting. We don't talk about trees much, so every seeds all over the yard and have deep roots and we sort of uh, I see I can see that why that would be a nuisance if like you want to uh, plant anything else. <laughs> so that's actually I'm sorry about that. Like uh, if you heard of the gumball trees, they have a little spiky spiky ball seeds and stuff like that. People don't like it because of that reason too and also like they're hard to deal with with like a lawnmower and stuff like that so um we i think we have them too um so actually don't know what they're called besides gumball trees but i mean this hackberry is an appropriate one because this is about deep roots and <laughs> I'm sure an oak tree would fit too and be more preferable because you can uh, eat the processed acorns. It takes some doing, but you can do it. So I like my gumball trees. Me too. It's it's my husband's favorite tree as, as well. So I have a I have a soft place in my heart. <laughs> um. So this is a quote by J.R.R. Tolkien. 
deep roots are not reached by frost. Uh, so that that makes sense. That means if you have, I guess, deep roots, you can weather uh, the cold, the winter, the storms. It's hard to have real deep roots today because a lot of things I think in our society make us have weaker roots, weaker connections. And I think um, our connections to each other are what make us stronger. So I am you know, constantly working on that and learning how to connect with others and be better at my communication. They are host plants for Luna Moth Gumball. Ooh. Is that a good thing? <laughs> um, I'm also not very familiar with the Luna Moth. I'm sure I've seen it. Luna Moth. Ooh, that one. They're gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm looking at pictures of the blue moth. Uh, family known as giant silk moth. Lime green color wings and a white body. The larvae are also green. That's cool. Are Luna moths dangerous? Uh, harmless. <laughs> According to the Google, apparently the, the silk moths are the quite possibly the most harmless creatures on Earth. Caterpillars are venomous and have hairs and spines, cause sore and irritation, but Luna moth care, care, caterpillars not one of them. Lunas are completely harmless at every stage. That's awesome. Do they glow in the dark? Luna moths have a strikingly yellow-green color that looks extreme, exactly like it the glow of a firefly, but they don't actually have the chemical bioluminescence of one. Hmm. Cool. But that's cool. Luna moths are wonderful. Yes, I, I did just find that out. So everyone should look up a Luna moth and images, and you'll see, and they'll look amazing. I, I can't say that I've seen many around here, but... I can't say I've been outside very much in the past couple of months, so I'm lucky if I see like the tree out the window. I'm, I'm pretty salty right now about um, my work life balance. <laughs> um, all right, so that's awesome. Another reason I really, really love gumballs. Oh, the kid's back. Did you get some water? Did you get some water? Kitty. Kitty. What are you doing? Come on, turn yourself around. There you go, baby. Now, how am I going to read with you over here? Huh? Okay. So, we're going to get started reading. We're on page 174. As the dark months roll in, and we're like at the opposite of this, uh, of the season for this chapter, because this is winter. <laughs> I mean, unless you're in, uh, like, Australia, so... It, as the dark months roll in and the seasons change, I find myself spreading, spending a great deal of time digging, washing, and chopping freshly grated roots. The sharp fragrance of El Campaign, the earthy bite of Shabbat, Shabbat <laughs> um, Kel Dilla, the anise intensity of sweet root, the unmistakable aroma of osha, and perhaps especially the sweet spice of American spikenard all permeate the cabin kitchen. That sounds amazing. <sighs> I really wish that I could just go work with these plants all day. Um... I've often been known to take bites right out of the freshly washed um, roots, chewing them thoroughly as I continue my processing. Um, 
And the root she mentioned, I can't pronounce. So she's talking about chewing on the um, A-R-A-L-I-A root. Um, I find this is direct sensory interaction with plants really aids my understanding of how the herbs work and the particular properties of the specific batch. So I don't know if anyone does that, just sort of nibbles on whatever they're, they're processing. Sometimes you can't. Like, you know, you don't want to chew on a valerian root. Um, <laughs> that would uh, not be good. But, um, you know, if it's some, like, lemon balm or something, you know, you don't want to chew on some nettles either, right? Like, that that wouldn't be good. So, but I also like to, like, crush whatever plants I'm, you know, and smell it if I can't eat it. I'm less likely to eat things because of my stomach, but um, I am more likely to smell. I like smelling and stuff like that. So, and I do believe that it, it does help you get to know the plant as much as you can do that with your, with your senses, get to know them with your senses. A great many of my roots, once cleaned and cut into small pieces, find themselves immersed in honey in some fashion often with a bit of whiskey or brandy for good measure, a regular folk tincture or even well-stored dried root will of course suffice, but I love having those root honeys and elixir on hand during the winter. In some cases of the spiked nard, the honey supply simply amplifies the already exquisite taste of the plant. Now, I've never had spiked nard. I've never worked with it. And she's saying it's yummy, so that sounds great. Um, in other cases, a good example like alicampane, the honey helps to meterate the very strong med medicinal. This is a polite way of saying taste like shit <laughs> in most cases. Flavor of the root. It's certainly a great way to get most any child or persnickety adult. You know who you are to ingest their medicine. I also, some people who aren't familiar with like, how herbal medicines are and and kind of like what some of them taste like like once you're sort of more i think once you're sort of more used to that it's not as shocking i mean i have i have tasted a whole a whole bunch of weird chinese herbs <laughs> all kinds of stuff over the years um going to different practitioners and things like that so i pretty much had a wide range but so but I will say that valerian glycerin is terrible. It's too sweet, like to take straight up. But I can take valerian tincture. I think that that's one case where, like, I think the glycerin just does not help the taste of that plant at all. But sometimes you can do that also. Um, even my daily nourishing infusions this time of year are often actually decoctions made of spicy warming roots and barks that are that act as warming cheering allies as the green pulls back nights grow longer the stews that simmer on the wood stove usually include astragalus and mushrooms such as mataki and morels not to mention root vegetables like parsnips carrots and turnips that provide a much much nourishment and flavor all autumn and winter long it sounds amazing it's a yearly ritual for a family to make up a good sized batch of gala harvest cider, com complete with horseradish root, turmeric, garlic, ginger, in addition to hot peppers, and the season's last fresh basils. Lately, I've been adding lovage as well, which has become a favorite ally, plant ally in the last few years. I think lovage is a lung herb. Don't quote me on that, but I think so. Anyway, so that would be me. That sounds like a fire cider. So if anyone's made fire cider, I know Miss Heather has um, and loves it. Then that that is what she's sort of really talking about. And if you're not familiar, just like a fire cider, rosemary glad star, or just fire cider, and it's very very obvious. <laughs> but what will come up? Um, we'll probably get some stories about the fight to free the trademark fire cider. Uh, anyway, I am super exhausted, yo. It's been a crazy week.
don't know. I'm sorry that we're not live on Facebook. I just, it, it's broken. It said it was, it was ready to go, but I did put the link up there, so. Um, I was just checking. <laughs> Love it to taste like celery. Oh, really? I've never had it, Heather. I've definitely never had it. So that's cool. Um, celery is not too bad. And it would work in a soup, right? Like, celery is real good in soup. Evergreen Enchantment. Page 176. I really don't know if we'll make it another 30. Or I'll make it another 30. <laughs> we'll try. While teaching a, a class a number of years ago, several of my students were mourning the fact that there were no live plants to work with in the winter. It's easy to feel this way when the world is wearing a white blanket of snow and the lush green of summer has retreated into dreams catalogs and our favorite herb books and if there are life plants to work with at all times of the year a home in the forest of new mexico certainly gets its fair share of cold weather ice and snow but i find myself wild crafting even in december or january when my beloved salts mountains are primary conifers forests and this particularly rich in harvesting opportunities there are evergreen trees and shrubs in almost every region i know of yeah, so even like chickweed will come back in the cooler weather because it likes the cool weather. So it'll die back in the really, really hot heat of the summer and then it, it'll come back. And I think some, I've heard some stories of people like harvesting it under the snow. So, um, so yeah, if anybody harvests anything in those months, what, what do you harvest? Um, and for me right now i'm not doing anything in the winter i do most of my stuff in the summer but i'm like making a lot of induced oils so it's a little different and i'm i'm limited um of course i'd love to do stuff all year round um yeah so <laughs> um and i had i just thought of a, a really good I just thought a discussion question for this section, and we're talking about deep roots. So, um, how does everybody stay, I guess, grounded and rooted during times of change, flux? I don't know. Um, what are the things that you really find you can pull strength from? Um, and then, yeah, so I think that, that's a, a good question. And I am falling asleep, yo. So um, this might be have to be a two-parter. And we've only been on like 28 minutes, which is very short. Um, But we'll we'll try we'll try to continue on. Many of these plants are resinous, aromatic, and warming, making them especially appropriate medicines, foods, and teas for the cold season. Included here are several brief profiles of the edible and medicinal uses as common gena of evergreen trees. There's almost always a pot of fragrant tea simmering on the wood stove in our cabin with at least one of these herbs or version roast in the oven or a venison roast in the oven that has been marinated in juvenile for berries and white fur needles that sounds really good for anyone who is not a vegetarian but um so she's got juniper fur pine and uh yeah so juniper and then there's various species of all of these plants I have some juniper berries that I got from Mountain Rose Herbs. 
I was trying to make an oil from them, and they're dried. So I think, like, you need some sleep. I do need some sleep. I do. I think that they would be better fresh. It was just sort of an experiment, like, because they're so wonderfully fragrant. Or maybe, like, when they're, like, not 100% dry, or you might have to, like, crush them. Um, with tea, it's good to have it dry. But, like, with oils, I think it's better to have it fresh. But, anyway, that sort of never went anywhere. And I think it was a request by someone who wanted the juniper oil, but I didn't actually achieve it. <laughs> but I have a bunch of juniper berries, so I have no idea what I'm doing. So, there are five different species of juniper common in my bioregion, and all of them have distinct tasting berries with my favorite being what locals call red cedar, found in floras under the name one seeded juniper, juniperus monospectrumal, spectrumal, with its shady bark, which is sh shreddy bark, and strong aromatic bark, and our tiny dwarf juniper, that wolf loves likes to carry fairy, called fairy houses. Juniper has gotten a bad rap as being an overt kidney irritant, but it is from, but it is from the use of essential oils internally rather than the whole plant. This is a traditional medicine with a long history of safe usage when worked in appropriate circumstances makes for great food flavoring and effective remedy. So this is a, did you crush the berries? I did crush them, some of them. I still think I have the oil. Like it's still infusing. It's been like, well, four years. <laughs> Maybe it's probably, it's probably really bad right now. Um, <laughs> sometimes you do things halfway. So, you don't want to take essential oils internally as a good rule of thumb, even though there are, I have some essential oil books that have cooking recipes with them, um, but even those are like things that are like lemon, basil, things that are more close to like food food, um, so might be rancid hot. Yeah, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good, yeah. I've had oil stay good for two years, even though it's supposed to be like a one year, but I've had them stay good for two years. I've had dried herbs stay good for longer than one year. So the rule of thumb is like you want to keep it one year, but if it smells good and it's got real bright color and it still looks very vibrant, then it's still good. So, but yeah, I mean, I guess I'm going to have to deal with all that stuff when we move. If we, we might not be moving yet. I don't know. Just everyone out there, we're trying to get a house, so cross your fingers that we get one, and one that's nice, um, one that is a good house, not just any. <laughs> it's really, it's really disheartening when two people who make really okay money cannot buy a house so all right um ah being warming and aromatic with a slightly bitter aftertaste juniper has a distinct affinity for the digestive system and urinary and renal systems it is especially popular popular for use in recovery reoccurring urinary tract and kidney infections where there is a dull aching and a feeling of weight across the lower back, and possibly mucus in the urine. Ooh. In regards to digestion, it's often most used where there is stagnation and coldness in the system of floating gas, possible constipation, and inability to effect effectively digest fat and protein. In any cases, it's best utilized for chronic cases with signs of coldness after any acute inflammation has subsided. That sounds... Oh, hello, Starless Mystery! Hello, welcome! Wait, I have to subscribe 
you said you had a YouTube channel, and I don't know if I've already subscribed to you or not. Um, but... Are we friends on Facebook? Okay, I don't know. It just, um, or you can, will you pop the name of your YouTube channel in the chat so that I can make sure I'm sub? I'm sorry, it took me like a delayed uh, reaction. I mean, a delayed thing. <laughs> I was delayed in asking about that. So it was good for you to join us today. We're talking about trees. Um, so. And I asked, we were talking about what, so you're in Texas, so what trees are around you? What trees do you have in Texas? Just me and my name? Oh, okay. I'll look that up then. Um, yes, so me. Hold on. I'm here. All right. I think I found you. I'm not subscribed. It's just Starless Mystery, 90 subscri 91 subscribers. Is that you? Okay, let me know. Oh my god, so many trees. Yeah, um, so do you, would you, would you, yes, yeah, okay, okay. I will, so, I will subscribe. I will do that right now. I, I, I wasn't thinking I was subscribed. Okay. Um, cool. Yes. Because me and Heather live in like a very similar region. So I was just wondering if you if you'd mind naming some of the trees by you, and if you use any tree medicine, or you do you know you do anything with your trees in a medicinal way, other than having some awesome like therapy just by them being around because because it's really important. I like just having them around and, and looking at them and. And everything, I feel like being like around a bunch of trees makes me feel safe for some reason. So, you haven't yet. I've just made like spruce oil out of like the sap, the pitch. I'm too busy learning herbs and mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't gotten to the trees yet either, really. Um, that's why this chapter is really cool. I've got an Eastern tree guidebook here. Um, I'm sure there's one for Texas. You know, I do know that there's cypress. Is it a cedar or is it cedar? I think Texas is full of cedar trees, which people can be allergic to if they're not from the area. Anyway, so been woodworking with the tree that got hit by lightning. Oh, cool! Cypress. Okay, okay. I made a permanent digging stick. That's awesome. Yeah, the cypress, and they're really beautiful. Do you know what kind of tree was hit by lightning? What kind of tree it was? North Texas has a lot of cedar. Okay. We've got, we were talking about it, we've got, we hear, I hear, I hear. We've got like a lot of pine and spruce and walnut um, and heather and gumball. Heather, we were talking about a, a hackberry tree, which is new for me. That was really cool. Ash, okay. Um, awesome. Awesome. Well, I hope you're doing well. I'm exhausted, so if I'm an extra rambly, let me, uh, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> so, um, 
So we're talking about Juniper, and we're at the end of one, we're in the middle of 177, if ever, anyone has the, the book. Oh, also, Starless Mystery, if you want to, um, if you have a book in mind that you want us to do for the next book for book club, you can put it in the Facebook group. You can just make a a post you want to add this book to the list or there is a a post i made about us having a new book um i've also made some decorative wood ball, wood ball from cedar carved with a bat neat do the one heather said before what which one? Heather, which one did you say? Do you remember, Heather? It wasn't this week. Um, all right, we'll try to all remember which one Heather said. I actually don't have any ideas right now. Usually I have some ideas. And um, I actually don't have any ideas, but we are very close. Also, um, we my work is changing i'm going to work days instead of nights so we yeah there's that i can't remember i'm i'm sure i'm sure we'll remember it at some point um i think we had i think you've mentioned winter sisters if women rose rooted i hid a 2020 bat coin inside of the wood ball <laughs> neat <laughs> That sounds neat. Um, I don't know. There's this book is I'm reading this book. It's but it's sad. It's it's a story book. Actually, I'm listening to it because I don't have any time to read actually. But um, so this is called Over Overstory. It's. It's actually very topical to what we're talking about. Um, yeah, the back border. Yeah. That's cool. I don't think I've seen one. Um, because it's about it's short stories about people and trees heavily um, factor into their lives. One, one is about a chestnut tree that this family, that, you know, that's important to this family, and one's about several trees. They're all kind of sad. So I don't know if we want to do that one. But if, you, if you're if you interested in this one, it, it's, it's good. It's real good if you like that time of story, and it's about trees and, and connecting with nature through trees and how these trees play into these people's lives. There we go. That's, my, that's the way I want to say it. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's real cool. There's an audible, so if you wanted to listen to it as well, so Sad Trees. Yeah, I know. Maybe there's a happy one in there, but I haven't, I haven't gotten to it yet, so. Oh, anyway, so, yes, getting back to, see, I told you I'd be super rambly. Um, so, book club will be going to 8 p.m. at night. Uh, probably next time we have it, and it may go to every week. So that's good. That's good. I'm not sure about that. No, I know. I know. I I also don't like stories that just sort of end and don't kind of wrap up. But I mean, that's more how life is. It kind of just sort of ends randomly. So wait, no, I have to go look at the summary for that book. Okay. Do you, I'll, I'll put the. It's called the Overstory. Um, we can we can put a a link. It's like the new. Anyway, it's a it's a brand new, it's a brand new book. Um, when did it come out? Yeah, April came out in April. I wasn't even thinking that I'd be like, 
very topical. Yep, so it's the Ogre Story. It's by Richard Powers. Yes, this guy. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's not typically what I like to read, but it is. But it is good, and it's talking about people and trees. So that is what we're talking about today. Yeah. So, but I don't think it'd be a good book club book because it it does it doesn't fit that. And and I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It would be a new a new thing for us to read a storybook. So, uh, Juniper, yes, yes, yes. So, as food and spice, juniper berries lead lend a distinctly sweet and spicy flavor to stews, meats, and other savory dishes. While generally thought of as an herb primary for game, I enjoy their taste with beef and bison as well. So I guess by game, she means like birds and stuff. Yeah, I'm going to get it though. It brought up some good books too. Oh, you mean it like linked and the suggestions? Oh, yeah. The Hidden Life of Trees. My, that's what mine brought up. And then Finding the Mother Tree, Discovering the Wisdom of the Forest. Those two look very good. You're right. I mean, unless it might have brought up different things for you. Um, I mean, there's a there's a lot of this one came out in May. Finding the mother tree, discovering the wisdom of the forest. Wow. And the hardcover is cheaper than the paperback. That is hilarious. Um. Okay, uh, it's definitely going down that rabbit hole. <laughs> I don't know, maybe we could find a, a book club book from one of these. But, um, I, I think, I think, I think, I think going forward, more people should try to get the book. I think I'm going to change the format. And I, and I don't want to, I didn't want to impose like a monetary hardship on people if they couldn't buy the book. So I'm not, sh I'm not sure about that. And maybe I would still make it so like that. Um, you know, if for some reason you didn't have the book, I would still, like, read around a good chunk of it, but maybe, like, not all of it, so that it just, you know. All right. Where am I? Fur. We're going to talk about fur. <laughs> fur. So, they, she said they have two species of fur. Uh, one she works with the most is white fur. The long, flat needles are extra tender, tasty, and sweet compared to the leaves of our other conifer trees. I consider this to be one of the southwest's most beautiful trees, usually growing, growing alongside Douglas firs, aspen, and sometimes even southwest white pine. Firs don't often, firs aren't often thought of as a medicine, and yet they have a long history of such by used by indigenous, indigenous and other peoples. The decoction infusion, the decoction infused honey or elixir made with honey and vodka is wonderful for quieting, quieting coughs that have moved past the acute phase and also for achy, swollen throat, sore throats. An old recipe from phys, phys, physiomedicalist. Physician William Cook called peridoctal drops is essentially a fur elixir with anise and libelia extract. Tincture works great though. Although Cook had more specific instructions for chest. Okay. Uh, wait, I'm sorry. Boop. Older book that you have to read. Rich Doctor Apprentice. Hunting 
for medicine plants in the Amazon. It's a true story. Huh. Sounds neat. So look that up. Um, Let's see. Yeah. Hunting for missile plants in the Amazon. There we go. It is 1998. I'll put up the um, the link. So many books. I know Heather. It's it's terrible. It's awful. <laughs> it's either it's both good and terrible because um. Because I wish I had more time. So that's that one. That was someone that uh, Starless Mystery is, is talking about. And it just has a hardcover and a paperback. Again, the hardcover is cheaper, which is hilarious. Although, yeah, that's so funny. That's cool. Why, thank you for those book suggestions. We can never have too many. <laughs> so, ah. All right, so this is about how to use fur. That she adopted this recipe by this person, Cook. William Cook. Um, so... She adapted her, the recipe for her own use with the general proportions of five parts. Fur, five parts fur, two parts anise, and one part libelia, macerated honey and vodka. And find it works wonderfully for those old coughs that refuse to clear up after a bad bout of bronchitis, or for asthma with cold signs, pale skin, pink, pale tongue, slow pulse, general lethar lethargy. Like both pine and juniper, it is not appropriate as a medicine in cases where there are clear signs of heat and irritation, including an acute inflammation. Um, so that's cool. So that's awesome. She is the reason we have things we can use, such as sangria dill. I'm not familiar with that. Is there like a more common name? I'm gonna look it up now. Bear with me. G R A. Um, plant. Oh! Dragon's blood. Okay. Cool. Something that I've never ever used in any way, but apparently Herb Farm has a tincture. It's a system restoration. Um, yeah. It's a tree sap. sap. I mean, I know that they make a resin called Dragon's Blood, so I guess maybe that's what that's from, right? Tree sap. Dragon's Blood, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's real cool. Um, 
yeah, I was, I, I, I've always wanted to make like incense and one of the resins is dragon blood that you can use. So, so many things I want to do. All right. So we're going to wrap up this chapter and then we're going to schedule for the week. Um, the mo uh, so, um, let's see. Many species, many fur species make tasty food and spice, and I use a good deal of my harvest of the needles for infusing into butter and oil for use in cooking. It works well in both desserts and savory dishes and lends a woodsy aromatic flavor similar to rosemary but less spicy. It's also wonderful to cock it into beverages, beverage teas, especially chai or acorn based teas. Gosh, that sounds amazing. All right, so we're going. Hey, I gotta go and come back in when I went. Okay, cool. Um, so, so now we're gonna be talking about pine. It seems like all, a lot of these can be used for like both food and medicine, which is really cool. So, um, the most common pine species in the middle elevations of southwestern New Mexico is the pinion pine. These straggly trees often grow interspersed with junipers, giving rise to the term PJ or pinion juniper to describe the particular southwest ecology dominated by these two plants. Oh, hey, there, it's completely non-toxic. You can use it for cats and dogs. Oh, awesome. That's great. The, the dragon's blood. Um, there is an awesome guidebook, which we talked about on the podcast that just came out and I'm going to, I'm just going to post it here because it's so cool. Um, and what it does is it, instead of, it breaks down, it does, it tells you about the plants and helps you identify plants, but it uses plant communities instead of, um, other ways of, of, of doing identification like some, some of them break them down like flower colors uh, so this is really cool so I just wanted to like pass it along I have two red pines in my yard and white pines nearby awesome I think we just they got like regular old pine <laughs> I don't actually know what species they are um it's antiviral antibacterial and antifungal oh that's good that's good. Like, you can't have enough of that. So let me put up the... Oh I've got a lot of tabs open. Yeah. So this is really cool. This will not help. Because you're in Texas, Starlight Mystery. But it's so cool. It's mostly with the north, the south, east. Um, I have two of those juniper pines in my backyard that are the poisonous kind. I'm about to cut them down. Yeah, that sucks. They're poisonous. But this is really a great book. Um, and it, it's Wildflowers and Plant Communities of the Southern Appalachian Mountains and Piedmont, A Naturalist Guide to the Carolinas, Virginia, Tennessee, and Georgia. So it, it is a heavy book. It's got a lot of colored pictures. Um, and it's just really great low, no way to, I think, learn about the plant communities and what grows together, which is really cool. And I don't have it right now, but I did see it in the bookstore recently. And yeah. Okay. So that was discussed on our podcast. Um... I'm gonna, well, I'm going to share the Spotify, but we are an anchor. So I'm just doing a, a shameless plug right now <laughs> for our stories for the Earth podcast. Um, it's with Ellen's sister, my co-host. So it's really good. She's a, she's a scientist. She's a scientist. So that's it.
Um, and put the anchor link. Because anchor is free, so like if anybody. Um, doesn't have Spotify, which is good that we have it, you know, because actually Anchor is owned by Spotify. How many people, how many people are in this group? So our group has 40 people, the Herbal Book Club, <laughs> but um, at most we can get about, I think we've had like seven people in usually we get around three or four lately we've gotten one to zero <laughs> so um but the stories for the earth podcast group and i don't think you're asking about that one but they, we have 93 and so but anyway but the the book club book is not a public group it's a private group and if i had known that beforehand I would have made it public because you can't share things outside of the group. Like I can post, everyone can post in the group, but you can't, if you want to share about book club, you would have to put up your own post about it. You can't like just share a post that I'm doing about book club. So, um, you know, and, and the group is, has been real quiet lately. I, I think we're just going through a, a phase. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, I try to make it real easy to join the discussion. Um, I try to have discussion questions, although I don't always have one. Can you still make it pub public? I can't because then everyone would have to rejoin. Um, and I don't think everyone would, I would have to basically sort of start all over uh, unless they've changed that. But when I, I had to do that with the stories for the earth group because that's how I found all this out, and I had to have everyone rejoin, and then I closed the other group because everyone wanted to share and and you know post about their their episode of the podcast. And they couldn't do it, so I'll I'll see if I can find out. I wonder how I wonder how I found it. Then I don't remember. I don't know. I mean, I'm on YouTube, um, you know, regular live every week. Maybe it was a YouTube recommends, and you just sort of stumbled onto it and um so that's one way to do it and i have the link in the description uh, down down at the bottom i think i have too many too many i was gonna have all the like i i have a bunch of links and discussion questions from previous episodes and i thought at some point that would be really cool to just keep that going and but like it, you have a character limit so i anyway i don't know i don't know i'm glad you did <laughs> so it's it's been, and you know, um, we've had some regulars and we were just discussing earlier, like, we don't know why they haven't been here. So, I mean, it could be the change of schedule and everything else. I think that, yeah, I don't know. So, um, maybe somebody shared something. You must have said the magic words. <laughs> <They're like kidding. laughs> oh, um, but yeah, when we have a bunch of people in here, it's great. The discussion really rocks and rolls, and 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 we have a we have a good old time. If you watch some of the ones, I recommend definitely like some of the oat ones that we did from Susan Weed um, and, uh, and that's way before like I started putting like more information in the title so I don't remember what number that was I mean some of them are really 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 good like it's just amazing please share your name again I can't remember oh I can't, I can't either oh my gosh so bad with the names um so I think there's a lot of potential but for some reason, it just really hasn't caught on even doing it every week. So, I mean, herbal stuff is less popular than the witchy stuff. Like, you say witch, and everyone's like, 
Oh, Christy, cool. Well, nice to meet you. I'm Jennifer, and this is Miss Heather, as you can see. <laughs> I don't think we knew that, Heather. So thank you for asking. Um, so, yeah, it's just something that herbal stuff is just not... I mean, some people are really popular, like uh, she walks in the wood, in the woods or something like that, and she's really, really, really popular. So, um, you know, some people, some herbal people are just, um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and I'm also, like, doing a lot of stuff, and I'm working, and then, like, you know, I don't know. I don't know, but it takes a lot of work. So, um, but I mean, I, I, I kind of, um, started April, no. um, I kind of started with sort of nothing, so, and then everybody else, you know, um, I, I definitely got to know Ms. Heather through this whole thing, and some other people, and it just sort of, the people that have participated on a regular basis, it's been really cool. So I just wish, I wish more people would because I think it'd be really cool. I see potential, but if they don't, then I, you know, I think a couple people keeping it going um, or who really want to do it um, would, it would be great. So, um, and you didn't even, like I wanted to make it where you could just not even read the book, you could just pop in you know, and, and join in and stuff like that for if you're busy or whatever. Like, you know, I think that's an issue with book clubs where, like, I can't, I haven't read the book. So I haven't read the book sometimes, like today. So I'm just like, Bruh. okay, I'm really rambling right now. <laughs> All right, let us finish. Let us finish. Pine. Uh, the sticky amber colored resin can be melted in a double boiler or something similar with olive oil or some other fat to make a incredible a wonderful infused oil. Pine infused oil has a spicy, sweet aroma, incredibly evocative of quiet evergreen forests and the best part of winter holidays. Personally, I think just the smell is therapeutic and spend a fair amount of time sniffing my salves made with pine resin. The salve or even the straight resin, effective but very messy, our traditional drawing agent in New Mexico for pulling out splinters, bringing boils to a head or similar applications. Being a powerful counter irritant, the salve is also very effective at spreading healing of old wounds that are refusing to heal or for soothing chronic sore itchy mu achy muscles. A juniper and fir pine is a warming herb and generally best used for chronic rather than acute inflammation. It does however blend well with other Vulnerary, vulnerary herbs for general first aid and use. Um, further up the mountain, we also have southwestern white pine, a more elegant and pale relative to the pinion pine. The tastes tend to be milder, and I prefer the, its needles for detoxing into my winter beverages and find it goes especially well with white fir needles, acorns, and cinnamon. Oh God, it sounds amazing. I love winter. Well, I love fall. <laughs> okay. This is Frosted Tips and Winter Wanderings. Well, each of these three trees show certain characteristics in common, especially their warming nature and ever-present gift of green. They're e unique enough to warrant taking the time to get to know them individually. If you live in a coniferous, rich environment, you'll find that there are significant taste variations among the different species within a genus. Not enough to change their primary actions as medicines in most cases, but enough to make for delightful experimentation when it comes to subtleties and recipes. Even in the coldest days of winter, I find that remaining in connection with the plants through direct contact keeps me rooted in remembering, bringing me back home, and returning me fully to my senses. That's a really wonderful way to end this. I really love that. I'm like, pretty hate it. Isn't it? Who to think? So that is the end of that chapter. And next time, 
and I'll post about it in the Facebook group because I'm not quite sure. I think we'll still stay on our every, we'll start every other week at night and then move to every week. Just see how everything goes. We're going to ease into it, I think. Uh, so this is a spiral of twining green, my journey back to enchantment. And literally, like, we've got two chapters. So I think this one might take us a little while though. Yeah. So that's probably a two-parter. And that's actually it, because the last chapter is the green well, and it's just books and recommendations. So um, basically we have one chapter left, so we've probably got about two, maybe three weeks left. Um, we could do a wrap-up, which would be really neat. Um, so I probably want to do a wrap-up of and I'll, and I'll put a bunch of, like, the questions in, and maybe we'll have new questions on what everybody liked about the book or didn't like about the book or something like that. I don't know. Um, so it is a lovely ending. I agree. I agree. Um, okay, so I want to thank everyone. I have to figure out two other small trees that are edible and native in this area to replace my crappy poison junipers with. Definitely. I'm, I'm, you should get a, well, I don't know. I guess you could look up like edible small trees that grow in North Texas area. Just start with, start with that and, and see where you get to. You, uh, if you have a, like a guidebook, you could definitely look up that. See, um, I'm sure there's, yeah, so I think that's, those are my two off the top of my head suggestions. Um, maybe you could look up on YouTube, someone's done a video, because people do videos on everything. <laughs> so, yeah, that would be cool. I'm, I'm excited on your, or your new trees. You're in Ingleton. Oh, Okay. I do not know where that is, um, but you're saying it was in the north. Oh, you're in South Texas. I'm sorry. I thought you said North Texas, and I apologize. Okay. Um, yeah, Heather says, I'm sure you'll have lots of options. Yes, I'm sure. Very swampy here, right by the Gulf. Still, there are probably trees that grow. Um, you know, there, that would be a great, a great option for you that maybe not necessarily grow in our climate, you know, so, um, the thing about the nature is that there's stuff you can find in every climate, I believe, I mean, I mean, it might be really hard in the Arctic, <laughs> so, you know, wow, well below Galveston, oh, wow, you're 25 miles from the Gulf of Mexico, wow, so do you bet you get hurricanes, right, Wow. Yes. Whew. That would be a that would be a challenging area for me. I mean, but here it's it can be also quite. We're supposed to be like a rainforest here, so it can be also quite humid and um stuff like that. 9B zone. Oh, that's helpful, too. That's another way to look it up. Look up your what grows in your zone. Find out what your zone is and look up what, what trees, you know, will grow in that zone. Oh, you like the hurricanes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was in what, two? One when we lived in Brooklyn, New York, and then another one when I lived um, on the coast of North Carolina, so... You can plant wonderful fruit, fruit bearing trees. Ooh, that would be great. That would be so cool. I'm excited to let us know what you um you decide to, to plant. So yeah. Yes. Yes. Alright guys. Well, I want to thank you all for joining me today and everybody out there joining me in the future. Um and I know what we're doing this Christmas. It's summer. Um, and we'll be back. We'll be back on the... Do, 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 do. 
We're going to be back on the 11th because we're doing the 2nd and the 4th Friday of every month at 8 p.m. or 8.10, something like that, so I can get set up. Um, and then everyone be thinking of a book that you want to do next. And remember that we are going to be on this book a long time. <laughs> it's the only thing to remember, unless we all hate it and we're like, oh, God, this book sucks. That's not good. It's not working out. Um, but, you know, you can see how many times, how long, like this is episode 36, how many weeks we've on. We've only done two books. So it takes about a year. <laughs> Um, probably less, but it takes a good long time. I might just replace them with two edible junipers. That sounds great if you feel like very, you know, pulled to this. I love juniper. I love the smell of it and, and everything else. The essential oil smells amazing and the berries and I just, it's very kind of dusky, sharp, something. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I hope that everyone has a good week, weekend. I'm going to have four days off. So, <laughs> yay. Hey, you guys. I made elderberry champagne this week. Oh, shh. Okay, we're coming over. Heather, I'm going to pick you up on the way south, okay? <gasps> I'm going to get some champagne. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Hey, Jen, look up Pascal Balder on Facebook. Let's see. Hold on. Uh, wait, wrong. P-A-S-C-A-L. Okay. This person has a lot of followers. Oh! Oh, sh So, he, while crafting sperm rotations? Is that right? Oh, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, uh, Heather, Heather would be really interested in this. Yes, I see this. Okay. Yes, this is, this is cool. I'm just, I'm going to just add him to the front. Maybe he'll be fine with that. I don't know. I'll see. Um, so he does. This is his Insto Graham. Oh, wait, I'm going to go to his book. Oh, well, wait. Oh, my gosh. So, this is one of his books. Um, use. He's got a seminar coming up. Oh, Heather follows him on Instagram. I'm behind the curve. Yeah, that's one of his books. Um, he's got a seminar coming up. Let's see. Yeah, March schedule, class schedule. Okay, so he's got wild crafting brewer, wild crafted fermentations, and a new wild crafted cuisine, exploring the exotic gastronomy <laughs> of local terror. Terror, that's some fancy word for like your local area, probably. Um, I have so many tabs up, you guys. Yeah, so we're, oh, no, that's not the new one. The new one. No, this is the old one. This is, okay, so this was 2016. All right. 
<laughs> All right, so this is the newer one, I think. The first one I posted, this one here. Well, that's cool. I'm not surprised that Heather follows him on on um, on the Insta because she loves doing all that stuff. Oh my gosh. I I have an issue with um, fermented stuff. I have a hard time doing that. So uh, just because of my digestion, just does not like it. I mean, a little bit. I can do like a little bit. These pictures are freaking gorgeous. I sure wish my Instagram looked this good. <laughs> I'm trying with the stories for the earth, but it's hard. I think it's going to be better when, like, um, anyway. Anyway. When we get on the road and start traveling and things like that. My Seawool Herbs Instagram is just totally like a Mad Mom's TV thing. I haven't been posting it. It's hard to keep up with. Um, maybe one day when we're podcast famous and like, um, you know, making my money on the, on the podcast, if you keep doing it, it corrects your digestion. Oh, I do do a little bit, like I eat this cheese, it's this, um, almond, this nut cheese, mostly he's about forging, which is cool, which I love. So, and, and. So I, I do eat this nut cheese and it has some 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 ferment in, in there so that I'm I'm sort of slowly trying to do a tiny bit and then like I got some sauerkraut because I have to be on antibiotics for a little bit so I'm gonna get in more good bacteria as good bacteria as much as I can into my gut because it's just gonna kill all of it anyway so cool. So everyone check out those books. Um, this guy seems real cool. And maybe he can be like a podcast person for us. Woo! I, I sent him a friend request. Who knows? But um, I might just send Miss Ellen a... I don't know. Maybe, it, maybe it's a YouTube channel. I don't know. Hey, right, sounds neat. Um... Miss Elena. Okay, now I'm really babbling. All right, guys. You should try and do mucha tea. I did, and I can't do it. I just really can't. I mean, and, you know, I mean, I, I've just come to terms with that. Some people just are not good with fermented stuff, you know, and it's just, it's just, it's just not good for everyone's bodies. And I know that a lot of people think it's good for everybody, but I, I, I can't. It's, it's just, I have to, to try to, um, you know, work on my digestion in other ways, and that's just it. But I do believe that it is good for you, and that if you can do it, it's cool. Some are too acidic, but some aren't. Yeah, maybe I need to try other types of kombucha, but it really disagreed with me, so I was like, I don't know if I can try any more. Um, I, I kind of... <laughs> but... I will, I will, I mean, we have some companies here in town that make fabulous kombucha. They use herbs and stuff like that. So, um, I don't like the real acidic ones either. Yeah. So, at some point when I'm feeling brave, I, I will try, I will try more. When you put it like that. So, all right. Well, I hope the pineapple ones are good. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, and I'm blanking on the kombucha company by us. You make your own kombucha. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of people do. That's cool. That's cool. Um, all right. I'm super tired, so I have to go, but, um, Oh gosh. Do you um da, 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 what am I looking for? Christy, yes. Sorry. Brain fried. Um remind us next time. Oh, you just make mine tea and vanilla. That's what I was gonna ask you. Okay, cool. 
Well, if we can remember to chat about it, it tastes like cream soda. Oh my gosh. Okay, Heather, we're going to Texas. I'm going to stop by my parents. They'll be really excited. And then we'll go down to Christy's house. <laughs> um, but yes, that's awesome. That sounds great. Um, okay, cool. So next time, 8 p.m.-ish, maybe a little later, I'll be posting and we will do our last chapter, but we probably won't finish it, so. You're all welcome. Aw, that's so sweet. We'll get, thank you very much. We'll, we'll, we will come after we're vaccinated so that, you know, we'll, we'll be safe for everybody. Um, and I don't know, I was playing around with a meetup, you know, for us, as long as you know my cats. Oh no, you saw my cat. And Heather's got like, four million cats so we are we're good with the cats that no, she doesn't she doesn't have four million cats. i'm jealous she's she's got a really awesome group of little kitties there so i hope you guys have a good week two weeks and i'll get to babble at you about my new job when that happens as well so all right all right oh and think about books Think about books. I will try to think about books too. So, Heather has seven cats. <laughs> yes. Seven lovely little kitties who I, I'm hoping to meet one day. Yes. Have a good week, everyone. All right. Bye. <laughs> no, no. Yes. Yeah.